Disaster on a U.S. airliner today. An engine exploded on a Southwest Airlines flight, sending metal fragments into a window and killing a woman. The plane had been en route from New York City to Dallas, but it made an emergency landing in Philadelphia. Rescuers swarmed the site, and in Washington, federal safety investigators got to work. We will begin our immediate uh, investigation, uh, examination of the, uh, of the engine and the, uh, the damage to the, uh, to the fuselage. The uh, engine will be ultimately shipped uh, off-site where we can do a detailed examination, uh, teardown of the engine. This was the first time a passenger has died on a U.S. airliner since 2009. The IRS website for online payments broke down today, hours before the midnight deadline for filing 2017 income tax returns. There was no word on the cause, but millions of last-minute online tax filers could be affected. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said anyone who is unable to pay on time due to the trouble will get an extension. President Trump says that a summit with North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un could happen in June or not at all. He spoke today as Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe arrived at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Palm Beach, Florida. And he said there have been very high-level talks with North Korea. And let's see what happens. Uh, we'll either have a very good meeting or we won't have a good meeting. And maybe we won't even have a meeting at all, depending on what's going in. But I think that there's a great chance to solve a world problem. Mr. Trump also confirmed that the two Koreas are negotiating a formal end to the Korean War. And he added, they do have my blessing. China will allow now full foreign ownership of Chinese territory automakers within five years, instead of partnership arrangements. The announcement today addresses one of President Trump's complaints about trade policies. But the Chinese also declared that imported U.S. sorghum is being underpriced and hurting Chinese grain farmers. It could face tariffs of 179 percent. The question of the president's powers to order airstrikes in Syria is starting to simmer in Congress. A bipartisan team of senators pushed today to replace the Authorization for the Use of Military Force, or AUMF, that dates back to 2001 and the 9-11 attacks. House Speaker Paul Ryan counseled caution, while Democratic Senator Tim Kaine argued it's long overdue. The goal is do something bipartisan, do something that updates these old authorities, and do something that puts limitations on the when, where, and who uh, uh, we are at war against, sp specifically about non-state terrorist groups, not nation states. There is an existing authority, that, and this was Article 2 in this particular strike, but the current AUMF does have the existing authority, and the question going forward on any new AUMF is does it give our military the tools they need, or does it tie their hands behind their back? Meanwhile, the State Department disputed Syria's claim that international inspectors have entered the city of Douma. That is where a suspected chemical attack sparked last weekend's airstrikes. Officials in Greece report a new surge of migrants entering the country from Turkey. Police say they have detained more than 500 people crossing over land since Sunday. The refugees are from northern Syria, fleeing heavy fighting in a Turkish military offensive there. Back in this country, President Trump criticized California's Democratic Governor Jerry Brown for refusing to use National Guard troops to stop illegal immigration. Mr. Trump tweeted that, quote, the high crime rate will only get higher as a result. Brown was in Washington and said the California Guard is already focused on cross-border crime. We have a couple hundred guardsmen uh, throughout the state uh, dealing with some of these same problems. So it uh, is a very logical next step to add a couple hundred more or, or more than that. And the guard is uh, chomping at the bit, ready to go. Republican governors in Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico have embraced the call to send the National Guard to their borders. Missouri's attorney general says that its Republican governor, Eric Greitens, may have illegally used a charity's donor list in his 2015 campaign. Josh Hawley, who is also a Republican, said today that it is grounds for pursuing impeachment. Greitens called the allegation ridiculous. He is already charged with, the inv with invading the privacy of a woman who had an affair with him. 
Starbucks says that it will close more than 8,000 U.S. stores on May 29th in order to train employees on racial bias. This follows an outcry over the arrests of two black men at a Philadelphia Starbucks. The training will last several hours and it will, invo it will involve some 175,000 workers. Technology stocks took Wall Street higher today. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rallied 213 points to close at 24,786. The Nasdaq rose 124 points, and the S&P 500 added 28. And longtime NPR host Carl Cassell died today of complications from Alzheimer's disease. He spent his career in radio and served as news anchor for NPR's Morning Edition from 1979 to 2009. In 1998, he became the judge on the news quiz show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Winners got Cassell's famed baritone on their answering machine messages like this one. Hello, this is Carl Castle from National Public Radio. Kristen and George are not available at this time. But before you leave the message, I'd like to sing you a little tune. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. What's new, pussycat? Whoa, 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 whoa. We won't forget him anytime soon. Carl Castle was 84 years old. Still to come on the news hour, Representative Charlie Dent on why he is leaving Congress early. The Supreme Court considers a case that would allow states to tax online retail. Fox News host Sean Hannity is named as a client of President Trump's lawyer. How Chicago is relying on its school principals to enact education reform and much more. <laughs> 